So I, uh, I don't want to be create the impression that I'm always setting myself up for failure in these topics. Um, <laughs> But I would still believe, you know, independent of the discussion that we have, first-line treatment for metastatic MSI high colon cancer at this point in time is still chemotherapy. Okay, so just as a little bit of an intro, we already talked about it, the different ways to identify patients with mismatch repair deficient MSI high cancers. You can do immunohistochemistry as a screening t tool, you know, for these four mismatch repair enzymes that should be expressed in, in tissue, or you can look at the actual biologic consequence of the absence of mismatch repair enzymes, the microcellular instability, the replication errors in the DNA, and for all practical purpose, mismatch repair deficiency is synonymous with MSA high cancer. I mean, that is what, something we need to talk about. Four to five percent of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer have mismatch repair deficient tumors. And we know that PDL1 and PD1 antibodies work well in a later line setting, because that's where the data are when you look at whether you look at pembrolizumab or nivolumab and plus minus ipilimumab. Most of the data that we have, except for one study, which I'll show you in a minute, look at later line setting, and there we see sustained benefit. All these patients had previously received chemotherapy, and we don't know whether it's the same setting of patients, whether or not patients had received prior chemotherapy or not, where the immune system works as well in a non-chemotherapy pretreated patient where chemotherapy theoretically can kill tumor cells, release antigens, and expose the immune system to antigens the immune system can react to. Okay, now the other point is, how does chemotherapy work in MSR high cancer? It's not that easy to tease out. We don't have a lot of data, but a very interesting data from the 8405 studies that bevacizumab containing regimens, not cetuximab, but bevacizumab containing regimens actually work quite well in MSR high cancers. When you break it down, a recent JCO publication, a more translational aspect of the large 8405 study, which uh, we le keep learning from, the best survival curve, the blue curve here is the bevacizumab curve. Cetuximab is actually in the bottom. And the combination between cetuximab and bevacizumab, talking about the interaction between egf septa antibody therapy and anti-VEGF therapy, somewhere in the middle, but not, you know, not as good as bevacizumab single agent. And there's actually a statistically significant difference in favor of bevacizumab compared to cetuximab. And the data are pretty impressive. PFS in this patient population, 9.3 months, and uh, the overall survival of 30 months. That's where we are right now. Now, um, the idea that bevacizumab works in MSR high cancers actually, as a side note, has also been shown in adjuvant studies. The NSVP CO8 study, Folfox plus minus bevacizumab in adjuvant therapy, actually showed a benefit in disease free survival for MSR high cancers. We never followed up on that, but there is some immune modulatory effect of bevacizumab, which led to the um, in combination of anti VEGF therapy plus immunotherapy, actually, in various tumors. Um, and in, in with chemotherapy, again, bevacizumab-based therapy is a good treatment for mismatch repair deficient MSA high colon cancers. Similar trend was actually also seen in a UK study in Quasar 2. Um, I just saw that the, you know, some of you follow this, and I you know um, Dr. Sullivan and I, we talked about this here up front. Brexit was just again rejected, you know, so it's kind of an ongoing thing. <laughs> You can still be prime minister. You lose three consecutive votes, you know, and anyway. So um, the Quasar study, normally drugs development doesn't work in the UK for various reasons. Um, but here the Quasar study showed exactly the same results as CO8. Now, chemotherapy in the first line, immunotherapy is a matter of current ongoing research. It's not standard of care. Actually, here in the United States, we are running a study Comparing a tezolizumab, a single agent PDL1 antibody in MSR high tumors compared with Folfoxbev and Folfoxbev plus a tezolizumab. If we knew that this was the right answer, we wouldn't need to run the study. This is your taxpayer money that goes into the study because it's run by the cooperative group system. Um, it's not accruing as well as we thought, but again, the study is ongoing. And the results of a study that has completed accrual, the Keynote 177 study, which compared pembrolizumab to Dila's choice chemotherapy, we don't have the data yet.
So there is no level of evidence really suggesting in comparison with chemotherapy that immunotherapy is better. Yes, I'm sure that Tony, who is my esteemed counterpart here, um, will highlight the uh, Checkmate 142 study where Heinz Lenz uh, presented data of a, the first line combo single arm study of uh, 45 patients. Remember, 45 patients, Nevo EP combo first line. Yeah, and the data were looked initially quite interesting with a good reduction in, in, in terms of response rate. Median follow up was only 13.8 months. And you know, there are some patients who actually had this increase in tumor size, and I have seen this. I have seen hyperprogression in MSR high colon cancer, not with Nevo EP, but with pembrolizumab, a patient who had acceleration of cancer growth on immunotherapy, even in a setting where it should work, and we don't know who these patients are. We don't know who these patients are. This has not shown the, uh, to be the case for immunotherapy. In lung cancer, we know it's a common phenomenon of about 7 to 10 percent of patients that have hyperprogression in the context of immunotherapy. Now, progression-free and overall survival looks good. But again, it's only based on 45 patients with a median follow-up of 13.8 months. So you really need to cut these curves off at that point and because you know, further along the lines beyond a year, they're not really solid. And if you want to prove something or anything, go to NCCN because they allow anything you know, in, in their guidelines. And NCCN is on my side because right now for patients who can tolerate so-called intense chemotherapy, meaning a doublet, which I don't consider intense treatment, there's no MSI-based treatment in first line, um, only if patients are not appropriate for chemotherapy doublet. But not, that's not the patient we're talking about in our debate. So NCCN, the clinical trial designs, your taxpayer money, cooperative group system, they're all on my side. So conclusions, <laughs> rightfully so. So small number of patients, available evidence shows bevacizumab containing regimens are a good choice already. We have phase three data supporting this. Um, the data on IO in first line colorectal cancer are very limited limited follow-up, limited number of patients, and NCCN guidelines rightfully relegate IO to second and third line treatment.